Hi, this is Trisha from East Marsh Acres, and today is Sunday of the long weekend in uh, in Canada here, and uh, the Labor Day weekend. Anyways, um, <clears throat> since we are still recovering from COVID, um, it's a be by ourselves and work on the farm type of weekend. So, anyways, we're going to this road here that Rollins starting is is full of onions and potatoes, volunteer potatoes. So we're going to harvest them today. Look so far like those volunteer potatoes are nice and big, but the onions are kind of dismal. So, anyways, we'll we'll see what we get. <clears throat> Otherwise, onions are cheap to get at the market. So, we will we'll see what we get. Anyways, um, watch us as we uh, see what kind of harvest we do get.
So your daily fix of uh, <coughs> meat birds. Chick fix. And they have started to climb up on top of the uh, heater. heater, heating pad. And uh, yeah, we're not, still not sure as to exactly how that happens. Um, I don't know how many of you can see it from, from the camera, but they are starting to get their wings. So the wing feathers are starting to grow. So this is day three. Well, they've been with us and they all have their wing feathers starting to grow out at the tips. No longer just fluff balls. Right, um, so this is Roland and uh, we just came in from the garden. Um, our harvest of onions is as you see it. Um, from my perspective, and I think from Patricia's as well, it's miserable, uh, deplorable. Uh, what other disastrous words can we actually yeah, apply to it? On the other hand, disappointing. Yeah. On the other hand, these are, for the most part, voluntary potatoes. And the size of them is just absolutely astounding with some of them. Uh, take a look at this one. That one. So we uh, have tomorrow yet to actually take the rest of the potatoes out and uh, see what kind of harvest we have. Um, so we're, we've got them out on, on the table spread out so that they can dry. Um, I don't know what we're going to do with the green ones. Uh, the green ones are actually toxic to humans because uh, they still have uh, photosynthesize, photosynthesizing uh, we can, pigments. We can cut them off. Pigments. Yeah. We can cut, cut the green off. Yeah. Right, but uh, the indication is that our potato haul is going to be our best ever this year. And uh, we had a couple of gourds that we, or squash that we actually uh, harvested as well. One of them came off accidentally, uh, actually two of them. So the pumpkin, uh, the pumpkin squash, and uh, that white one that you're seeing there, um, large acorn type shape, or uh, I don't know, butternut squash type shape. Um, I think this is a spaghetti squash, um, but I'm not sure. Um, so, and, and we've seen all indications of a whole bunch of other squash plants that are in there as well, or squashes. So I, it looks like we're actually going to have a pretty good uh, harvest of squash this year. Squash and potatoes, beans. Uh, we did okay in terms of the, the uh, uh, enough look. Um, garlic and uh, sorry Dutch word comes much easier than the English word for some reason or other um, and uh, we are uh, looking forward to seeing what else that we're going to harvest uh, it looks like the carrots are going to be okay this year as well uh, we've got some pretty good indication that there are anyways um, so I'm going to wrap this up here uh, and go and get myself cleaned up I'm uh, sweaty, uh, even though it's um, cooled off considerably out, outside. It's uh, supposed to be a high of 22 or so today. Um, pretty mixed clouds, lots of cumulonimbus running around, uh, floating by fairly quickly. Um, it doesn't have, at least not to my skin anyways, a fall kind of feeling to uh, do the weather at all. Um, so let's see what actually happens as a consequence. Uh, just going to walk down here a second. Take a look at the elderberries. We've got three elderberry plants that we planted. There's the biggest one, quite large. And there's the smallest one, and here's the other one. Um, so there are quite a number of elderberries 
that are developing on here. I don't know how long it takes them to develop. Uh, it looks like some of them are being eaten. And I think there's quite a number on this plant as well. There's a couple of different locations where the elderberries are growing. And then we have <coughs> blueberry plants. So here's a, a bloob. And here's a bloob. And here's a bloob. And then we've got two nanny berries. So this one. And that one. That one hasn't grown all that much, but there's some new leaves on the top there. And then we've got three other, or two other. So this is a pawpaw. And then there's supposed to be another pawpaw here. I do believe. It's still there. Struggling a little, I think. Strawberry. I was just in the blue, uh, not the blueberries, the uh, raspberries yesterday, and uh, they were doing okay. These strawberries seem to be still blooming. And then there's more strawberries over here. There's a strawberry plant there, strawberry plant there. More over there. Starting to getting get overshadowed by the goldenrod. Lots of goldenrod down in here. And the asparagus. That we planted with them as well. Anyways, we see what comes of them as we go through the fall. And we've had glorious time with the viscous plants upstairs. They have just been doing very, very well. And there's another one in the far corner. Rachel's got a couple as well. There are signature plants that uh, we have all year round. Um, during the winter inside and then bring them out onto the deck where they absolutely seem to thrive. Anyways, uh, that's it for now. Uh, I think we're going to go and have some lunch and maybe I'll come back out a little bit af this afternoon. Uh, we'll have to see. Alright, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Bye.